Our heroes have made it through the Holy of Holies and are one step closer to their goalie of goalies. This week on D&D Minus. Inside the body of the Colossus, the air is warm and wet. You travel for what feels like hours through ropey intestines until finally you see light up ahead. As you make your way to the end of the tunnel, there is a steep drop, and in front of you is a sizable lake, not of water, but of acid. In the acid, chunks of earth form small islands, and corpses of large animals float by, slowly dissolving. On the far side of the lake of acid, you spy two large tubes of glass with liquid roaring up and down between them and a small platform in front of them. Why don't I just do a general perception check? Can I do that? Yeah, roll, roll, that, roll that dice for me, yeah. All right. Should we all? Uh, if you want to, yeah. Hit. I got... Wait, you don't might not need to because I got... Wisdom. I got a 17. 17... Yeah, I mean, you don't see any obvious danger. Uh, it You can probably guess based on that role that you're inside the Colossus's stomach, but the only safe place to stand that you can see other than where you are is the platform on the other side of the Lake of Acid. Well, what's, the, uh, what's the distance again between us? It's about 50 yards. All right. What's the pH of the Acid Lake? Mm. Uh, seven? Nope. Mm. Nope. No. Two. <laughs> Literally the only number you could <laughs> Yeah, that, that absolutely could not work. Yep. <laughs> so it's water. <laughs> 40. Could have been I mean, a base like less base, than that. Yeah, exactly. been, or as like less than that base like above million. You, you hit the on. <laughs> I asked the questions here. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, y'all. These animals ain't dissolving all that fast. I reckon if Claw wanted to jump in and see if he could swim, <laughs> we would know. <laughs> Or we could do like a... Um... Oh, now you're not going to be chaotic. <laughs> All right. This is the one time. All right. So let me ask you this. You said there are corpses of animals floating around. Does it look like we could like raft one of them? You know, like like maybe... Yeah. Make a, make a perception check for me. Or you know what? Make an investigation check, I think. All right. Oh. What's in... Like, hold on, because I think I got... A, I have a plus five on investigation. All right. Which oh, makes it 16. That. I'll say this. There's definitely large enough masses in here that you could either jump or try to forge your way through. If you were trying to forge your way through, you'd have to find something to use as a row, right? Or as an oar. But there's definitely large enough masses that you could maybe hop and jump your way across. Yeah, I was thinking about claw for that, too. Okay, all right. So you're thinking, you're thinking we could pitfall it. Yeah. Uh, what, well, okay. Um, how deep is this uh, lake of acid? Can't tell. Can't tell. Okay. Because, yeah. I mean, we've got, like, bed rolls and stuff and ropes and shit. You said that there's, like, stones, though, like, right? Like, Yeah, there's, like, little uh, clumps of earth around that, that are definitely big enough that you could jump from one to the other. Yeah. Do you want to maybe do, like, I mean, so it's either a trap <laughs> or, like, a creature, right? So would you think, like, if we did a minor illusion that crossed the stones, we would see if... I'm asking the party, not the dungeon master. We would see if like something popped. So we could do a minor illusion and and make something like a like an imaginary fifth one of us walk across the way we would. I'd like to summon Carl the Pug Peggorn. There we go. Across. Something with mass. Oh. Yeah. Something with mass. <laughs> <laughs> so Carl, who I guess just vanished momentarily, <laughs> appears in front of you and says, Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you want? What do you want? Uh, I'd like you to fly fly across the acid lake and uh, check out the the two bongs on the other side or whatever those are. <laughs> two bongs on the other side. All right, let me go check these out. Uh, those, uh, Hold on, wait. Are those bongs? I volunteer as tribute. <laughs> <laughs> Carl flies out across the lake, hovers over the surface of the acid, makes it to the other side, sort of wanders over. He goes, uh, yeah, there's... Um, 
There's some stuff over here. There's like a a dais or a dais. How's that word pronounced? And then there's some buttons and some levers and a door. Like a group of people who are roasting somebody. <laughs> Is that what, What's that? What you're describing? No, it's like that. What's that thing where there's like a not a plinth platform? Uh, yeah, kind of like a platform, but small, and there's levers on it. A control panel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Press, press some of the levers. You want me to just randomly press some of the levers over here? <laughs> yeah, just randomly yeah. press the levers. That, you think that's a great idea <laughs> yep. or an awesome idea? <laughs> I feel like you're gonna be fine. Yeah, yeah. You think I should just uh, go ahead and press <laughs> the levers? All right, let me see here. I'll press oh uh, one God. of these. No. no. And he's sort of pulling levers, and he's like, oh, oh, the the uh, the button, the button is glowing. The button's glowing. Oh, definitely press the glowing button. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I got them all pressing down. So now, if I press the button, and as he says, press the button, a torrent of water. He's sort of in the little chamber that's in between <laughs> the two glass domes. Comes crashing downwards, and you just hear him go blah, 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 as he is swooshed down the two giant tubes of reddish liquid, and he's gone. Ha! Carl, he's gonna be so mad. He's gonna be so pissed. <laughs> I think I think someone should take your familiar away from you. I don't think no, those are bongs. Familiar, it's magically, you can't. Nope. <laughs> Carl has free will. He can do it. He does not. <laughs> <laughs> I just made him press levers for no reason randomly, and he did it. He's so True. dumb. True. Did he he questioned it though, right? Do you think he was just like Dave has my best interests at heart? Yeah, I think he was. I, that I very it. much <laughs> doubt he thinks Dave has his best interests at I heart. I very much doubt anybody thinks they have Dave's <laughs> best interests at heart. Except Dave. I'm not entirely sure Dave thinks that. Mm. Um, mm. All right, fellas, here's what I'm thinking about all these clumps and bodies and shit in here. We all have some ropes and shit, so it wouldn't be all that hard to lash together some kind of a a raft or even a a bridge of some sort. 50 yards ain't too far for us to just lasso to the other side now that, you know, our only flying member's been killed for the purpose of lever pulling. He's fine. Uh, Well, yeah, but he's not here is what I'm saying. He could have, like, dragged us across. Oh, well, That's what I'm that. saying. We couldn't. <laughs> yeah. But we could probably do, a, like, a lasso type of thing now. All right, so I have a question for the DM here. How big around are these tubes that we're talking about? They're about large enough to fit a ship inside. I mean, they are huge. A ship, like a like a Pirate schooner, ship. yeah, like a like a boat. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, then that doesn't Boats that that are fucks up my plan. Many different sizes, silly god. <laughs> yeah, we could have been way more specific. You could have given me a number of feet, perhaps. A rowboat. I feel like ships suggest something bigger than that. That's true. How many masts? Big, big. <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't all right. So here's the big thing: we could building size. We could use our rope to lash together some of these, you know, whatever gallstones and dead bodies and shit. But then, as the good Lord has pointed out, we don't have an oar to push our way through the acid with. Um, and because we don't uh, have wait, wait, I have a, ba a war hammer. It might dissolve. I I can't imagine this guy's stomach acid. I mean, the, the body the the bodies of the animals are dissolving slowly. True. I feel like we can just walk through. It's pH seven, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even acid. It's nothing. It's water. So, um, yeah, there's that. Or or is there? Do we have some way? Because all we would need is to anchor a rope on the other side or something, right? It's only fifty yards. It's not that far. So if we anchor a rope on, on the other side, we could just pull our way across. Uh, the tubes are too big to do that, and we already killed off Carl, so he can't just go tie it to something. Well, don't you have a, a way of summoning Carl? Yeah, I'm going to summon him again. Uh, you can't summon him until the next morning. Let's rest until next morning. <laughs> <laughs> In his stomach? Nah. Okay, so here's the thing, too. The other, the other option would be for us to like try to lash the the largest of the corpses. One of us try to go over pitfall style, whoever has the best dexterity. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, do you want me to like acrobatic across quickly? Yep. I definitely want to see, because I, I just want to watch that happen. Sure. And then I can, I can take the rope with me and hopefully anchor it on the other side. Maybe you can steal something on the other side too. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right, Morgan, roll an acrobatics check for me. Okay. 16 plus 5. Yeah. You Damn. wait, I I I take the end of the rope first. I take whatever yep. the end of the rope first. 
Yeah, you leap from mass to mass until you reach the far end of this uh, small lake of acid and are standing on the other side. So nothing happened. Nothing happened. Sweet. All right, y'all. Now I think all we need is a fox, a hen, and a pea. <laughs> and we can nail this shit. Now, is there anything, do we see any bodies nearby us that are close, that are like would be big enough to, to carry one or more of us over? Yeah, definitely. All right, so I feel like we should just get on one of those and grab the rope and have uh, have Claw pull us across, right? Love it. Nice. Make a strength check for me, Morgan. Okay. 18. No, sorry, two. <laughs> what? Two? What? Yeah, what? no, it landed on two. I was looking at the wrong side. Two, yeah. <laughs> Wait, but I, I have the my portent that's higher than that. Oh. The two just might mean that he pulls us slowly. <laughs> well, I think it has to be before the roll for you to oh, use your oh, portent. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm I'm not sure. Double check. But then I'm gonna use my all or nothing. Oh no, is that before two? That's yeah. also before. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Never mind. Why don't we yeah. just see what happens with this two and then decide? <laughs> <laughs> so Morgan, in a feat of strength, you felt yourself incapable of you yank this rope, which comes flying out of Dave's hands falls into the acid and, and disappears beneath the surface. Feels like if he was at a strength too, it wouldn't fly out of my hands. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> I feel like I'm the strong one in that <laughs> diagram. I feel like Dave should... Uh, I, if yeah. I roll above a two, that wouldn't you happen. Know, I, uh, <laughs> I was just adding a little flavor. I mean, okay. we have other rope. Like, yeah. that would have been just should one I of our ropes. We back could, across? I could just <laughs> throw... No, I could just throw a rope to you. It's 50 That's yards. That's true. You know? yeah. yeah. Or, wait, I mean, right. probably wait. not me. Uh, what what kind of strength check would that be, or check would that be? Dude, that would be a strength check that for sure. I feel like that's check? athletics. So here's the thing: if we tied something to the end of the rope, you could do like a like a Thor swing with it. You know, right? Like I, you could like spin ooh, it and throw ooh, it, and that that make have, it a lot easier. I have a uh, where where is it? A torch. Yeah, there you go. You know, just put some weight on it on All the other right. end, get a good spin on it. I'm know. gonna tie yeah. a torch to. My um, the end of the rope, and I'm going yep. to use my athletics to throw it over. Roll, go ahead, make that athletics check for me. All right, that is a 18 plus four. Oh, yeah, it goes soaring out over, lands right in claw, claw, snatches it right out of the air. So now I put now we try this again. Yep, go ahead, try it again. I feel like how many more ropes? Does the yeah, team I was gonna have? say, I feel like this one fails, then we're like. <laughs> Let's reevaluate. I, I have two ropes <laughs> at the moment, so I can, All right. I can replace it. So am I just going to roll another strength check? Indeed you are. Okay. But act like I don't have two ropes, so like <laughs> try. <laughs> Maybe put your back into it. Can we get a quick check on how long these ropes are? Because mine is 50 feet, not mine, yards. Eli doesn't know the difference of that. Why would you Why would Why you would you bring that up, man? Why would you? <laughs> why would you do that? You tied your ropes together. That's, take it seriously. Just, that's just really dumb, <laughs> dumb playing there. I rolled a 19. There hey! you go. Yeah. You safely pull the rest of the team across this lake of acid. You step safely without taking any damage onto the other side. So you're on this platform on the other side of this acid lake. And at the center of the platform is a little plinth in the shape of a heart. And that heart is divided into four chambers. Now, below the heart is a large red button, the one you heard Carl mention earlier. Inside each of the four chambers of the heart is a lever. The upper left-hand lever is pointed up and labeled one. The top right-hand lever is pointed down and labeled two. The lower left-hand lever is pointed down and labeled three. And the lower right-hand lever is pointing up and labeled four. What do you do? So sorry, that's up, down, down, up. Up, down, down, up. Yes. Okay. Is there a left, a right, or a B, or an A? <laughs> or a start? Or a start? I mean, because if you look at it I sideways. I got an idea. <laughs> Can I clarify? This is where they were when Carl hit the button and got flushed no, out into the... That isn't where they were. No. They were so they've reset downwards. themselves from all down to the thing that now we know. Oh, they're... okay. Yeah. All right. Correct. So when I told Carl to do random spots, he did all down to be a dick. <laughs> I mean, you didn't give him instructions. So. I said random and he agreed to random. He that didn't mix random. it up. He thought down, 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 down was the first. <laughs> He's going to start with that as his random. Okay. Take it up with Carl. He deserves it. <laughs> all right, y'all. I'm figuring 
Now, I don't know if we should do this right away or anything, but I'm thinking up, 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 up <laughs> is vomiting us out, right? I mean, that's yeah. just, that would be the logical thing. So what right. I'm thinking is maybe we could like, you know, I don't know, put something like put, drag one of these smaller animal corpses up here, toss it over there, <laughs> put it up, 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 and then we could all stand back and try to like throw something at the butt and see what happens to the corpse. Yeah, right? yeah that's excellent. Uh, where was uh, Carl sitting or where was he when he was right in front of the plinth he hit the button yeah Mm. did he go down or up the water went down right the water went down and pushed him with it he pointed them all down and he went down the down tube Mm -hmm. got it so i'm thinking you know we still have all of this 50 yard rope we could lash ourselves to something if we wanted to the first time around just to make sure we had it right. And Carl's definitely getting shit out of a giant right now. That's hilarious. <laughs> I would think pissed because it was liquid. Hey, I, uh, well, I don't Carl know. We're in the stomach, though. Carl so isn't liquid. Yeah, we're in the stomach. True. Yeah. Well, we didn't what say what if kind we of liquid. put the ropes around the remaining ropes around each of the levers and then stood back. Well, there's a button too, right? It's like yeah, you pop yeah, you the levers, set the levers, and then, levers the, and then push the button, oh, and then the great. button activates whatever you've done to the arrows. I have a gun to shoot the button. <laughs> you have a blunderbuss. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to make a minus one investigation check, but I'm doing it anyway. You want me to do it? I got. I have plus well, five I on got investigation. Two, so. So no, what? Nothing. Noah, what, what were you saying? <laughs> Bridget, you can tell that these levers are a devious trap. <laughs> <laughs> but that was on I don't too. Think, I think we should try All right. crawling up so, the outside of the thing. So Heath, why don't you um why don't you roll for investigation instead of me? Because mm. I, I not not like I not like I only got a four. Was, <laughs> I mean, that would be crazy. That, that would have been crazy. That would be I'd so like to roll for investigation for the first time of anybody. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> it's a two. <laughs> that's a plus one it's a two plus one we get yeah, one more mine was a nine i got a nine <laughs> so what's wonderful is your characters feel the same way about this <laughs> lever puzzle as you all do you're fucking trying to lasso it with ropes <laughs> bridges trying to shimmy up the side of these smooth <laughs> glass pipes claws seeing if maybe if he turns up down, uh, down the pipes turn upside down it's real fantastic all right, y'all. I still think I got the best idea here. We put something in there. We 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 put all the levers up. We step back far enough that the liquid shit ain't gonna get us. And we throw a dead animal at it. <laughs> we throw something at the button, or we use the rope somehow. We could, you know, we could set up some kind of like Rube Goldberg thing that'll drop a thing. And I I I would love to try that that lasso esque sort of thing again with a torch on the end. Yeah, there oh, you go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Which lever do you throw first? I feel like uh, two and three we put up, right? We we we. we okay. Are you doing up. that simultaneously? No. How about one person stands there and does it, and the rest <laughs> of us all step back? He clearly wants us to do it simultaneously. You heard that, right? Well, I uh, wait. Are the levers spread out? Can't one person do all the levers at once? They're on one plinth, so they're on one plinth. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, one person could do two levers at one time. Yeah. We yeah. could even tie ropes to them and do them from <laughs> yeah. afar if we wanted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the rest of us can stand back, right? We don't have to be mm-hmm. right next to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to so tie tying ropes to them. Yeah. And we're going to turn them all up. Okay. So, when you turn lever number two, lever number three turns uh, up. And then when uh, you pull on lever number three... It goes down, but so does well, lever number four. But but I wouldn't pull three because we were trying to get them all up. Right. But when you pull lever two, lever three automatically, because right. it's mechanically attached right. to number right. two, so then I goes down. So then it was already got, down. Now they're all. No, it's, it was down to begin with. So if it turns yeah. when I turn two, it's then up. now they're all up. I, I just wouldn't pull three. Oh, OK. OK. That's wonderful. So all correct. That's that's why I asked if you did it simultaneously. I see. I see. Mm. And we mm. did not. And I could you did not. Tell. Yeah. Post-taste. Conveniently. <laughs> uh, so now they're all faced up and the button on the plinth glows red. All right. Do your torch thing there. I shoot what? it with the blunderbuss. Wait, what was, <laughs> wait one second. From point blank. <laughs> what was the color of the button last time? It was red last red. time. Too. It was? Yeah. So, Odd. Was it red? It was red. Okay. Wait. So then let's move it until it turns like green. Let's move the arrows more. Maybe. 
I mean, if y'all think he's more clever than up, 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 that's fine. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> let's do the torch thing. Then we'll then we'll know. Yeah, let's do the torch thing. All right. So we're all standing back as far as we can and then pressing the button. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are we putting anything on the in front of there? Yeah, a dead animal. Okay. Okay. Cool. So so you grab the corpse of a dead animal from this lake of acid. You pull it into the chamber where the plinth is, mm -hmm. and then you throw something at the button yeah. to hit it. I'm gonna do an athletics check to throw something into the button with the with the torch with the rope on it. Yeah, go for it. I bet you twenty dollars you don't get it first try. <laughs> ah, oh, ye of little faith. Uh, here we go. It's funny. That's funny because I'm a, a cleric. <laughs> uh, faith. All right, that's an eight. Uh, yeah, it goes just slightly to the side of the plinth and lands on the ground. $20 face. I will try again. Great. $20 again, double or nothing. That is a 17. Nope, didn't yeah! say that. Yeah! Hits right in the center of the plinth. You hear the rumbling of water from below, and the chamber where the torch is now sitting on the floor fills with this red liquid and then shoots upward on the pipe on the right, upwards and out of view. I'm thinking that's puke us up, you know. Uh, yep. I, Let's go. Are we supposed to be puked up? We want, we're trying to get up to the face, so, right? I think that, so. was, that was the goal. Aye. Uh, what happens if you just, if we just press the button now? Actually, when you did that, the levers reset themselves back to their original state, and so when you push the button, nothing happens. Oh, I see. Yeah, so we just... Push right. the second one to up and press the button while we're are all we, standing. I think we'll be okay. Are we are we gonna fall to our deaths up up there? No. Let's just Probably have like not. Claw do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then what? Like call us on his cell phone and And then take the rope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the rope. <laughs> Snedrick, Snedrick, do you have message? I don't believe so. Let me check. I do not. Bollocks. Never mind. All right. Oh wait. Oh wait. We do have we do have little birdies. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we have our yeah. paper birds. Right. So we could send we could just send Claw one up there. Person up there. And he could send a bird back down this guy's throat. Well, yeah, they can get anywhere, right? If they just know your name. I mean their magic. Yeah, no, that's that's solid. That's solid. Okay. You wanna do it? No, I, I, are you are you you go, your game to go? Sure. All right. All right. So you're pulling the lever number two. Watching lever number three push up. Claw's getting in the chamber and pushing the button. Yep. All right. Claw, as you push the button, uh -oh. you hear the roar of rushing water. It sounds like Niagara Falls is coming up from underneath you. And you barely have time to catch your breath as two massive columns of reddish liquid fire you upward at blinding speed. You feel yourself being rocketed further and further up through the body of the Colossus. And just as you start to run out of breath, you feel yourself come to a large chamber at the top of the flow and the water drains away below you. So as you look around, you notice something different about this room. The mechanics, the wood, the add-ons that you've seen all around the rest of the Colossus's body are gone. Everything in this room is made of pulsing living flesh, except for the corner of the room at its only exit. There. You see an iron gate shimmering with some kind of magic that you don't recognize, and slumped unconscious against that gate is a very, very old elf. I bet I'd recognize what kind of magic it was. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll uh, send the bird back down with the message to come up. All right, bird comes floating down with Claw's message to come up. All right, let's do this shit. All right. I told y'all the code was going to be up, 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 up. I bet it. I bet his password is password. <laughs> hey, everybody. Just jumping in to thank you for listening to the podcast. This show has just been so much fun to make. It, it feels like playing Dungeons and Dragons back in high school in my basement again, but with way, way funnier players and a way, way weirder world. And we're glad you're enjoying this weird world we're creating as well. If you enjoy the show, uh, hop on iTunes, give us a rating or Spotify or wherever you listen to the show. If you love the show, why not consider supporting us on 
Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash D and D minus all spelled out. You get access to a special game we played, Lasers and Feelings, and two Dungeon Master's Corners, as well as some of the stuff I use for the game, like the Robe of Bread Summoning and all sorts of cool stuff when you sign up over at patreon.com forward slash D and D minus. The next episode of the show will be out December 4th, so that's when we'll continue our adventures. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll let you get back to it. Same thing happens, carried up. With the water, just as you're about to run out of breath, it drains away. You're now all in this chamber looking at this slumped and very, very wet old elf who is unconscious. <laughs> Thank you for the Foley work, you're Anna. Welcome. Thank you. Yep. I'm going to wring out my <laughs> hair really delicately and my mustache. There mm-hmm. it is. <laughs> Y'all, my fucking snog's bane is ruined. <laughs> do we want to look around did you say there's nothing in the room except for flesh and an iron gate and an old and an sleeping old elf. or unconscious elf yeah okay mm-hmm. i'm gonna yeah. yell wake up old elf <laughs> i'm sorry wait this, this I'm, wake up old elf wait wait I'm gonna, <laughs> it does it look like the elf is like hurt or wounded or starving or- yeah It's like someone put two giant torrents of water at him in a room (laughs) that he couldn't escape from. Ah, I see. Or three, actually. Three giant torrents of water. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. And a dead body. I'm just going to spare the dying on him real fast here. So uh... Wonderful. Yeah. So he rouses ever so slightly and his eyes open wide and he says, Yes, you must be figments of my imagination. I knew I would go mad eventually. An Aracocra, a Dragonborn, a Dwarf, and a Gnome are an odd assortment for my brain to concoct, but that's madness, I guess. All right. Feels like we're going to do like a riddle with Iocane powder or something. Uh, so who are you? Uh, me? I am Diogenes, named for Dungeon Master patron Diogenes the Cynic with Right, the creator of the Colossus. Are you sure you're not named Diogenes? Nope. Diogenes. All right. I just thought maybe you would be Diogenes. <laughs> Nope, Diogeny. Are you sure your name isn't Chimera? <laughs> nope, <laughs> Diogeny. All right, cool. Uh, um, so how long have you been here since uh, we're just figments of your imagination? Ah, yes. Well, you see, that's the problem. 50 years or so, it's hard to tell. I was operating the machine, as is my way, and I just put in the life stone so I could have a rest when I was attacked by a horrible creature. It threw me through the gateway, and I've been trapped here in the antechamber ever since. What hmm. machine were you operating? The Colossus! Oh, and you put uh, the life stone to bring it to life, and then this happened? Uh, no, I put the life stone in there as a sort of cruise control, if you will. It's what I put into the brain uh, while I sleep and eat and sit. Oh. And what? Sit? Sit. Sit. Surely? Shit. Sit. Well, shit. no, fit. Are you saying shit or sit? I believe you're saying shit. <laughs> Not fit, fit. Okay, write it shit. down. Well, I mean, if you could, if you sat down, you could technically run the Colossus at the same time. But I, and oh, shit. whoops, I, I forgot my character accent. Excuse me. <clears throat> sorry, sorry, I had a, I had a frog in my throat. If, so this is, you don't, you put it in there when you go to, to use the bathroom or go eat or sleep. Yes. All right. It was shite. But you already know that, don't you? Because you're a figment of my imagination. Of course we do. Yeah, but you imagined us not knowing that, obviously. And you've also imagined us not knowing anything (laughs) about this curious gate over here. Tell us everything about it. Ah, yes, the gateway. It's indestructible. And I'm afraid I am the only living person with a key. It cannot be picked. Magically unlocked. Nothing. So I've been here for 50 years. Waiting, and I, I suppose now I've gone mad. Uh, what do you say? Shall we play a game? I spy something pink. Huh? Flesh. The something flesh. pink? Flesh. The f- uh, good. She got it. All right. <laughs> uh, another one. Hey, I got... W- no, it's my turn. It's my turn. I, sm- I spy something key-shaped. Where am I looking? Uh, I don't know. Where? It, you lose. It, 
Let's. I'm winning this game now because she got yours. Um, at you, dude. You said you had a key. Ah, uh, yes, I did. But unfortunately, when I was attacked inside the master control of the brain, it threw me this way. My key was uh on the other side. Okay, so and you so used I... to be the only person with a key. Yes. What were you attacked by? Ah, uh, well, if I were to guess, I would say it was a beholder. But it was unlike any beholder I've ever seen before. It seemed mad and, dare I say, undead. But beholders are powerful creatures and very hard to kill. I have no idea what kind of creature could kill, let alone command a beholder. I guess, in a way, I'm lucky that it's behind that gate and with the only key in existence that can get me down on the other side. Now, how have you lived long, like, how long you said, a year or so? I think it's been about 50 years. It's hard to tell, because I can't see the sun and I've just been stuck Why here. Why are you still alive? I'm an elf. We can actually go very long periods without food or water. Oh, I... And if you think about it, you're going to have us to eat eventually. That'll be that'll probably add a little we're bit. We're just to... we're just figments of his imagination. Though. Oh, right, right. Figments yeah, of imagination. Really yes. Uh, quick question: What's on the other side of the um, indestructible wall? On the other side of the gate, the control room for the Colossus, of course. And I assume the undead beholder that kicked me out here. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it's definitely completely indestructible. Like, there's no chance. It's it. Would you say it's not conceivable that we would get through that wall? <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you this. I have been trying to get through this gate for the last 50 years, and I helped create the Colossus, so... And how have you been doing that? Uh, well, I tried magic. Uh, I tried thieves skills, even though I didn't have any lockpicks or anything. Uh, I tried wishing really hard. Uh, I spent about 10 years doing that. Uh, then I tried strength. I did some push-ups and some sit-ups and really tried to give it my all, but didn't manage to get it open. So, yeah, I've tried pretty much everything. All right, so let me ask you this. You said you built the Colossus, right? I am one of the three great explorers who built the Colossus, yes. I didn't ask for all of that biographical information. I just said, <laughs> all right, so the, the gate you said is indestructible. Everything else is flesh, which in my experience is destructible. So why are we trying to go through the gate instead of just, you know, all this other shit? Well, this is a lot of flesh. And seeing as I didn't have any, you know, weapons or right, right. anything, oh. I, I tried clawing my way through, but that the, the, the beast heals itself faster than I could make my way through. It's, it's also very, very strong. You got to remember, we're inside a colossus. So it's not like you could just hammer your way through or stab your way through or blunder buff your way through. That's weird. Weird that you would specifically say to all of them. I'm looking at the yeah. things you're holding. I mean, I'm trying to help. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, I think we should ask about the other two guys really quick. Oh, yeah. Where are they? Ah, yes. From the house of Dragonborn. And of course, there was Boulder Stash, one of the greatest inventors and creators of our time. I miss them both. Greatly. Oh, wait. So you must mean uh, the old adventurers that uh, that had grandchildren eventually. I don't know if they had grandchildren, but yes, they were adventurers. Hmm. I think this is like a, we need a boulder stash and a dragonborn and this guy to stand on. To use a video game example, stand on a pad. Yep. And then we go through the door. I. Bridget, ma make a history check for me. Yes, I will. Yep. I remember that first time we played. Uh, one second. <laughs> um, uh, oh, shite. Okay, that's a six. You know what? Even with a six, you remember that you have a key in your pocket with a note that you got from your grandfather from the seven chested drawer that says, Bridget. I think you're going to need this. Love, Grandpa. Ah, thank you. <laughs> I actually don't have that in my inventory on my thing. So that's good to know that I have that. Podcast listener, I texted them to check their inventory. I, I, really I literally am checking it right now. <laughs> Take a look. Take a look, you dumb shite. All right. Um, oh, I just happen to have this right here. Is this the key you're talking about? 
Wait a second. Let me see that. Let me see that. No, I want. I'm. I'm gonna keep it away from him. You don't get to just take it. So he doesn't. He he gently tries, and he goes. That looked like that could be the key, but but that would mean that you are Arthur's g- sire or or grandsire. I'm Bridget Boulderstash. <gasps> then that may be the key we need to escape once and for all. Let me just check my inventory also to see if there's something that wasn't listed in it on my list, but is also nope, a key. You don't have anything. Yeah, okay. It's still not in my inventory. I don't know uh, what to tell you, buddy. All right. I mean, you you have it. I have it. Excellent. <laughs> so I am going to try to open this door. Yeah, you put the key into the lock. It clicks open and the iron gate swings open. All right, everybody prepare your spells because I think there's a thing. So as you try to go through the gate, Diogenes throws himself in front of you and he goes, please, please, you're not ready. Do you even know what a beholder is? A beholder is essentially a floating head with a single Cyclops-like eye surrounded by 10 smaller eye stocks that allow it to see in all directions at once. Other than this, the main feature of the beholder's anatomy is its massive gaping jaw. Now, they are xenophobic and vicious creatures. Beholders are quick to attack enemies, including anyone they deem not like themselves. Beholders, as a rule, are violent and greedy, hungering for more wealth and power over others. This was made even more complicated since more than one variety of beholder exists, each believing itself to be the pinnacle of bodily perfection. And they view other beholders who differed from this image in the most minute details as loathsome enemies and inferiors. What I'm saying is, it's probably not safe to go in there. I feel like this xenophobic, violent guy is going to be super excited about my gun. I should, like, you know, talk <laughs> guns with him. <laughs> well, I'm staying in here because I don't want to get destroyed by a beholder. All right. Do you think any of y'all think you could do a convincing giant floating head with squid eyes? Super duper. <laughs> yep. Oh. All right. All right. Well, wait. So, wh- d- what did we see after we went through the gate? You, had, you didn't go through the gate. As you started to walk through the gate, right, he, he threw us. himself in front of it and stopped okay. you. Okay, okay, okay. All right, how about this, guys? I got an idea. We could do like a, we could do like an illusion of a lady beholder to seduce him and bring him. Didn't you know. he just say that any other beholders, he, it's going to attack because they are not perfect? Well, we could make a per- perfect one. <laughs> Why don't we just go in guns blazing, literally? Get your blunderbuss out or whatever it's the fuck out. that is. You see it. Gross. Put that away. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we could do like a but we could do a few minor illusions so that we could maybe get initiative on the attack. Oh, yeah, like pass without a trace or whatever you've got. Yeah, well, <laughs> and I Eli, you can tell me to stop if I Google something that you're about to explain. <laughs> like just happened. That's totally fine. But yeah, I think that it 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 has dark vision. It does. Yes. Oh, so. what if I, I got a fog cloud? I could throw in a fog cloud so we could go in under that. All right, but aren't, aren't we trying to get to the controls? That's where the life stone's going to be. Like, unless we can draw him out away from there. Oh, I have an idea. I have uh, the mark of the spirit master tattoo. Mm-hmm. And I can uh, charm an undead entity. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, fuck yeah. Ha <laughs> ha, look at that. All I can do is make... Wolves jump out of my ass. That's useful. <laughs> you have to be looking at the creature to do that. Oh. I'm looking at it. Uh, well, <laughs> we. I think we need to go in there then. Well, w- one of us does. The one with the charm, the fucking undead. Do we want to do the illusions so that we'll... It, does it seem like it will attack beholders before it attacks us, other beholders? Well, if he can charm it by looking it in the eyes, I say we just send him in there to do that. We don't really need... Oh, and we just stay outside... Hey. Yeah. Hey, elf guy, how intelligent would you say a beholder is? They're very, very intelligent. Like, out of 20, 9, 7, 8? Oh, they're, they're pretty intelligent. I mean, it's undead, so it's probably less intelligent, but I don't know basically what it's, you know, how intelligent it is. They're very smart creatures. They're not as smart as they think they are, though, so... You know, it depends from beholder to beholder. It's in the eye of the beholder. I, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Why don't we all follow and um? And in, in case it in, whips his ass, case, we we fight. In case and shit. we need to to whip some ass, exactly. Yeah, there you go. I'm in. 
All right, sure. so we're going right. in, and I'm going to do the charm thing. But you're going to go first. All right, so as you walk through the passage that leads to the center of the Colossus's brain, you can hear the beholder speaking up ahead, sort of mumbling to itself. Let me see here. All right, can I make that work? No, <laughs> no, can't make that work. All right, what about this one? Nope, not that. Stupid, All right, we don't have stupid, to worry about intelligence, man. You got this. Yeah. I am going, I'm going to ready Bane. To mm -hmm. spell Bane for as soon as as soon as things go down. So you walk in and this you see this giant beholder. It is very clearly undead, but it's it's facing the controls. And even though it can see you based on the eye stalks on its back, it's entirely distracted trying to operate these controls, frantically flipping levers and pushing buttons and mumbling to itself. Okay, let's see. Uh, all right, uh, what if I try lever number one and lever number two at the same time? Nope, nope, that doesn't work. Uh, all right, try to try lever two. Number three, same time. Nope, nope, that, that, that doesn't work. And he's just now getting to one and two. It's been 50. Let's just years. let him keep talking until we figure out which levers go together. Um, <laughs> is there a place to hide? No, I mean, he sees you. Oh, he sees us. Yeah, and you, you stand there for long enough. Because you don't do anything right away, you just sort of stand there watching him. Mm -hmm. He turns around and he says, wait a second. What are you doing here? You guys seem like you're bad people, and I hate bad people. Can I say that right now? I'm going to dissolve you using my magic powers right now. All right. I'm going to. So Bane, I'm going to cast Bane because I had it already. Well, didn't. Didn't. Also, I charm him. Yeah. Uh, there you go. There yeah. All right. Jesus. And wait, 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 wait. Before he rolls, do we, do we need to. What is Cedric's high roll thing? It's, I, it's not a particularly high I, roll. So. If, I, if oh, okay. you let me cast Bane, then he has disadvantage on him. Okay. Can we do both? Can we do, get like a. Uh, can we walk to... down this hallway slowly and I just peer around just enough to see him and immediately do he that sees and then us this already. happens? He sees yeah, he's us already seen us. So I'm gonna ca I'm casting Bane. He has to make um he has to make a charisma saving throw. All right. Charisma not his strong suit. So excellent. That is a four? Yeah, that doesn't get it. Before the spell ends, the target must roll a D4 and subtract that number rolled from any attack roll or saving throw. All right. And then, Dave, what does he need to roll for your undead control thing? Another charisma saving throw. All right. That is a negative one. Nice. He's <laughs> charmed as fuck. <laughs> he is charmed as fuck. Dave, you are Kim Jong-un. <laughs> you activate your tattoo, and for a moment, nothing happens. You can feel the magic acting on an incredibly powerful force but you feel the push of the spell grow stronger and stronger until at last you feel a snap and the beholder, which has sort of been menacingly heading towards you, says, all right, fantastic. You guys are finally here. So good to see some decent people, some people who love it here. You would not believe how unfair this control room has been to me. Probably the least fair that anyone's ever been to any beholder in the history of ever. Charming. All right, do, do we see the um, life stone? Yeah, in the very center of the console, there is a glowing stone in the center of the sort of thing. Uh, does the console have uh, four levers and a button on it? No, it has <laughs> hundreds of levers and buttons all Let's around the Let's turn all of them up. I bet it's all <laughs> up. Seriously, I think we should put them all up. Oh, I see what your problem is right here, man. It's this big glowing orb in the middle of the thing. That's got it on autopilot. None of your levers are going to work while you got that plugged in, I think. You know what? I just had a fantastic idea. This little glowing orb in the center, this is probably keeping it on autopilot, which is preventing me from running the Colossus. So we should take this orb out of the center, and then I'll be able to run the Colossus and do my dark bidding. That's a great idea, man. Yeah, we just need the stone. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you should set it near my buddy Claw. <laughs> he grabs the stone with one of his eye stalks and looks at it for a moment. He goes, eh, boring. Throws it over his shoulder to you guys, and then begins to operate the Colossus because you just took it out of oh, autopilot gosh. mode and gave it to a beholder. Hey, hey stop, stop. Uh, he's controlled by me, by the way. Yes, he is. But the key is that we have the lifestone on you. Yeah. That's uh, cool. No, I... Uh, are you sh okay. I mean, there's, you know, mass destruction under these this Colossus feet. Plus it's you're inside its body. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Hey. Uh, so maybe... Hey, uh, Dave, could you hop to it? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm controlling him right now. So, I uh, first of all, stop. Do stop controlling the classes. Stop stopping, it. stopping right okay. now. And uh, what dark bidding were you going to do with it? 
Fantastic question. Best question. Probably the best question ever been asked. Thank you. Anyways, so whole story. Let me catch you up. I'm in the desert of eternal winds, right? Beautiful place. You've never seen anything like it. The winds, literally eternal. Anyway, I'm golfing. Not that I golf often, but I was. I meet this girl, very rude, very unpopular. People are saying she killed me. Fake news, didn't kill me. Anyway, she suggests after she kills me, which she didn't, that I come here, see the Colossus. It's huge. (laughs) It's fabulous. I get here. Terrible shape, unusable. Nobody's ever inherited a worse Colossus than me, but we just got it working. So, uh, you know, like that girl suggested, I'm going to use it to wreak chaos throughout the lands. I'm going to destroy things, blow stuff up. You know, it's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. I'm going to turn to to um, Dave and I'm going to whisper to him. I'm like, get him into that little antechamber. Go in the antechamber. <laughs> Oh, antechamber. Love it. Love the idea of going to the antechamber. Honestly, I need the break. I could use the break. Yeah, exactly. And he starts to head off down the hall. Uh, but the elf in there, he's cool. Just send him back in. Got it. Sending in the elf. Hey, hey, this big guy. Get in there. Get in there. What? Ah, what? What do you mean? Get in there. I don't know. I'm hanging out in the antechamber. I'm taking a break from me. Little me time. You know what I'm saying? Get in there. And then of uh, Diogenes uh, wanders into the chamber and sees that you're here holding the life stone and that the Colossus is no longer in autopilot. We close the, we close the gate. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to lock the thing in the antechamber. Yeah. We close Great. the gate. Yep. Yeah. It's locked in there. You can hear him sort of mumbling to himself. Oh, love this antechamber. It's fantastic here. Looks great. Feels great. Love it here. All right. Cool. Sing a song while you're in there. Happy birthday to <laughs> you. Happy birthday. That's to public me. domain. I don't give a shit what anybody says. You can sing that all Happy you want. Birth, for I'm a jolly good beholder. Okay, stop. That's enough. All right. Recite some uh, Shakespeare poetry. Uh, Maybe. Wait. Get him, <laughs> get him to... What did he go to college for this shit? <laughs> get him to recite Keats. Do some Keats now. <laughs> Don't say hats. <laughs> famously, and famously, Keats said Keats, yes. Keats isn't in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Keats? Fantasy Keats. So while you're doing this, while you're messing with the beholder, Diogenes runs over to the controls and sort of keeps the Colossus from falling down. He's pushing levers and pulling buttons frantically. Man, he's pulling buttons. That's weird. <laughs> That's a weird elf. I'll tell you that. Guy Genius, Guy Genius, what are you doing? What are you doing with the Colossus? I'm keeping the Colossus functional. You can't just leave the controls to a giant Colossus unattended. Thank goodness you called me in here. We can, obviously, you know, you can. Uh, so how do we get out? Oh, I, I can let you out. Great. Cool. We're taking this lifestone with us. Yeah. Uh, there is the uh, matter of the um, beholder in the uh, other room. He's locked, I, it. He's locked in there. He's and locked in there. He has to do what I say. Yeah, he has to do what you say, I assume, while you're still here. I, I, I can't be trapped in the skull in, in a colossus Ooh, forever. How do we get rid of him? I can, I can tell him to leave. Well, don't you have a lever here that makes water come up into that chamber? Can't you just you know crank that up to 11 and drown the motherfucker? Uh, I can crank up the water, but I don't think that'll kill a beholder. Oh, right. Yeah, because he's undead. Can we just flush him into the ass? Uh, I, I can't flush anything down. This is the entrance chamber. The way to get down is uh, here in the control room. And he points, and you can see sort of like an elevator door behind you. You want me to make him go in the elevator? Uh, I, I suppose. Yeah, that, that might be a good idea. Beholder, go in the elevator. Stop singing. One second. If, if you like pina coladas. But finish that. Finish that. And then <laughs> go in the elevator. Finish that while we have a, a chat. Wait, what are we going to do with him? How long does this charm spell work? If you're not into yoga. Um, I, I've got him. I got him for an hour. You got him um, for an hour? And, what should yeah. we do with him in an hour? Should we go down and get help from the village to like deal with him? Hey, elf guy, what do uh, do beholders have like magic that we could use? Make him do it. Uh, I I don't think that beholders have magic. That's weird. He do you singing. Wanna, do you want to? Uh... <laughs> there he is. Do you want to <laughs> step on him with the colossus? Oh yes! If you could get him down to the bottom, he would. I could step on him or or have him crossed. Yes, that would be great. There All right, well, we'll, we'll let's do that. Do that. All right. Well, Let's do it. All right. I mean, the idea of stomping on Donald Trump like a cockroach is probably the best thing that's ever happened in this show. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am pretty happy about that. So the beholder floats through the room. He starts to head into the elevator, and then he turns to you. 
And the expression on its face, if, if you want to call what a beholder has a face, changes. And he looks at you and he says, you know, that girl, she was so... Uh, you know, there... Are you okay? There's a terrible rumor being spread, spread by nasty people <laughs> that I'm turning into a pile of goo. And I want you to know, that's totally fake news. And with that, he melts into a pile of goo. <laughs> oh, okay. can, can we maybe put this goo down there and have the Colossus just step on case. it anyway? It's just <laughs> catharsis for me. Uh, I got to say, I think the problem has solved itself. Why are you holding the life stone? J- a juggling act. We, so, you know, my great grand, my grandparent, who is so yes. boulder stash, he said that I should take this. Uh, he wanted you to have the life stone, one of the parts of the wand of seven parts. Yep. I've literally been entrusted with protecting it. Yep, that's what he said. I heard that from Bridget, too. Yep. You might be surprised. Uh, Snadrick, do you want to uh, show him what you have? I don't want to, but I will. I will. I'm, I'm going to pull out the wand of seven parts. I'm also going to shoot the pile of goo with my blunderbuss just to be thorough. <laughs> <Right now. laughs> Blam in the corner. As a, the goo scatters around the place. And the moment you take the wand of seven parts out of your pocket, the life stone flies from where it was and fits into sort of a divot in the wand. And it glows with a brilliant light and then settles back down. Ooh. And of course, Diogenes runs over and he goes, oh, wow, this is, this is really it. The wand of the seven parts. That must mean the, the queen of chaos is back. Unfortunately, yeah, I'm sure that's who damn fucking Beholder Trump was talking hey. about. Do you guys notice this is like super derivative of the Marvel Universe with like the, the stone, the life stone, the whole thing? Oh, the, yeah, they're the only ones who get to have a seven part I, thing. Yeah, Don't. It's sure. not even a seven part. It's fine. I, uh, it's actually based on the number. Time. That's genius. I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be, just be taking this stone. Yes, yes, of course. I didn't realize that you were here completing the Wand of Seven Parts. Maybe lead with that if you meet anyone else who has any of the other parts. <laughs> As opposed to just, hey, how's it going? My grandfather says I can have this. <laughs> well, you don't need to get all aggressive about it. But I mean, you thought we were figments of your imagination when we first yeah. met you, man. No, you know, Forgive us for not you know, giving you a ton of credit. Oh, I'm sorry. Would you like to spend 50 years in the other room by yourself and see if you don't get a little kooky on the other side of things? Yeah, you know, I managed to go this long not getting myself locked in a room for 50 years, but, you know, maybe that's just me. Yeah. <laughs> so, Are you hungry? <laughs> <laughs> I am starving. Thank I you for asking. I have some bread that I Yay, can just summon if you want. bread! <laughs> oh! bread let's make it happen yeah okay i'm gonna summon some bread so you're summoning bread diogenes is chomping along whatever bread it is wait that you what summon. kind of bread yeah no yeah, yeah we, we have to know. let's get the bread. fucking bread table yeah. hello let me get the bread table out <laughs> yep once again the How whole point is that you. i wanted you to take out the bread table obviously <laughs> the fool fool that i am uh this is a new bread table by the way by patron arch stanton created an awesome bread table that's based on uh, a thing called a hundred breads and muffins. Okay. So this is a brand new <laughs> bread table with all sorts of cool shit. So Dave, roll two D10s for me. We're going to see what kind of bread you keep. Fantastic. Thank you to Arch Stanton for creating that. Uh, Dungeon Master level patrons have this already. That's a uh, five, five. Five, five. All right. This would be nut breads, sweet or savory, baked with whatever nuts are locally grown. So yeah, he's chomping down on the nut bread. Wait, what nuts are locally grown inside the Colossus' ass? <laughs> it's a sweet bread. <laughs> you seem undigested. That's cool. Pe- peanut breads. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, dang. So yeah, you are happily chatting back and forth and uh, have the Lifestone. Have, have, have rescued the Lifestone, have rescued the creator of the Colossus, and the Colossus is now once again functional with its creator uh, in control. Can we go down and, like, bitch at those stupid priests now? Absolutely you can. <laughs> That's a weird priority. <laughs> but, but that'll have to wait until next time. <laughs> All right. <laughs>
The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.